Welcome to Design for the Creative Mind, a podcast for interior designers and creative entrepreneurs to run their business with purpose, efficiency, and passion. Because while every design is different, the process should remain the same. Prepare yourself for some good conversations with amazing guests, a dash of Jesus, and a touch of the woo-woo, and probably a swear word or two. If you're ready to stop trading your time for money and enjoy your interior design business, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Michelle Lynn. All right. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm so excited you're here. I'm really looking forward to introducing you to our guest today. Her name is Erica Reiner, and she is the owner and principal designer of Eco Method. Is it Eco Method or Echo? It is Eco Method. Eco Method Interiors. So welcome, Erica. I really am glad you're here. Thank you so much for having me. Like I said, offline, I've been listening to you all day and feeling all jazzed up about our, you know, alignment and uh, some of the things It took me a little bit longer to figure out that you're teaching and preaching. So I'm so happy to be here. Yay. Yes. So, so literally we have an actual interior designer on the podcast. I think you were the first one other than my team, Debbie and Megan. Yay. Yes. Yes. So I think it's so fun just to have like all of our, our peers, you know, talking about experiences, what's working well for them, what's not working well and so forth, because, you know, I'm such a big advocate of community over competition. Like there's enough business here for everybody. And I really love that. I just want to take a second to say that I appreciate that so much. And, um, you know, it took me a couple years to get into that headspace and to figure it out and kind of do away with the scarcity mindset. But once I did, it was so rewarding. And I've started gathering all these really cool, you know, colleagues around me. And I just appreciate that about you. Well, thank you. And I I think it's been my experience that you know, originally when I first started my business, there wasn't a lot of people talking to each other. No, I I think it's because we're all keeping things so close to the vest. What I've realized is I think nobody knew what they were doing either. I think you're right. (laughs) Because I certainly did not, especially like, I mean, I don't think they teach much of the business in school anyway, but I'm self-taught. And so certainly I was like, Oh God, this is I can't believe it. it was crazy. It was like, yeah. I just have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and we all think it's interior design. It's bound to be pretty easy, right? It but is one of so the most complex businesses. Parts. Yeah. It is yeah. not glamorous the way people think. That's for sure. No, I thought I was a business badass and I fell flat on my ass. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your eco method and you've got your own podcast green by design. Like tell us about what the podcast is about and your, and your business, just how do you dive into and what is the eco method? Sure. Um, so yes, um, I was getting, getting approached by a lot of other designers who were saw I was doing something green and wanted to be involved in that in some kind of way or learn about it or, you know, see what that all looked like. So I started my podcast screen by design for other home pros with exactly your kind of mindset community over competition and, you know, trying to be a voice that's going to lead the industry into a little bit of a cleaner and greener place because it's quite behind the times, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So that's what that came about. And the, the, Eco method kind of, you know, I rebranded from my name to that a couple of years ago because I was, I was really wanting, I just knew that there were people out there concerned about the things that I was, and I didn't want to keep like forcing my values onto other people. I wanted to like have the people that had those values come find me and just kind of, you know, niche and also, you know, be out loud and proud about those values <laughs> and uh, you know what I want to achieve and do for my clients because I think it's a I think it's a great thing. So, uh, so uh, let let me back up in regards to you were talking about designers coming to you to yeah. learn green things. What were you doing to promote or to get the attention as a green advocate? Lord knows I did I tried a little of everything. So I'm not a marketing <laughs> professional, um, but I certainly learned as much as I could. And, um, you know, just in rebranding and my 
website itself and the messaging there. Um, my Instagram, same thing. Um, even though it's still quite a small following, just trying to be educational and get, you know, more people to hang out with me there, you know, doing talks in person, you know, pre pandemic and yes. doing just had my finger in a pot, you know, what's that expression? You had your finger in the pie, a couple different pies. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> had a few different fingers and a few different pies or in the cookie jars. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to, um, get the word out and, you know, shout it from the rooftops. So I know after speaking to like hundreds of interior designers, A lot of times it's so very scary to niche down into something. Mm -hmm. So did you find that your market increased or decreased once you started to head in this particular niche? Increased. And we have a similar story, I think, in that when I first started, I wanted to do organizing. Yes. um, Design, like landscape design and... And then offer great like eco consulting as a separate entity. Interesting. Um, so then that was the first pairing down. So then mm-hmm. I got rid of everything and decided to combine the eco friendly with the interior design, get rid of everything else. So definitely, I would say increased first. You know, it's hard to parse out what's what because like first as a factor of just planting mm-hmm. those seeds and marketing and you know working, working, working to to build the business and let everyone know it's here. And then, yeah, trying to make sure that the people who are already looking for someone like me can find me. Um, So it's a little bit hard to say, but, and I still get into a little bit of a scarcity mindset where I'm like, oh, am I going to turn off this kind of client that I would really love to work with? Or is there going to be a preconceived barrier to entry? Mm -hmm. But um, even I'm just, you know, taking faith that even if there is, it can be overcome. And I just think it's going to get, you know, more and more popular. And then lastly, I, again, like it was really important to me to stick to my values. I have a, just like you, a whole previous Mm -hmm. career and, but mine happens to be in the environmental field. So it was really a part of my identity. And at that point I was like, I just can't leave it behind. So I'm just having faith that even uh, with a niche, um, and it seems to be coming true, that it's going to be nothing but positive. And like they say, niche till it hurts. (laughs) (laughs) Or riches are in the niches. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that, and I think that, well, one, it's very unique and interesting, but our, our planet needs more of the eco values. But it's also so interesting because one of the things that I teach is that we all have something in us that will benefit our clients just because we're not classically trained interior designers, because we have completely different and unrelated industry experience. It it could be a mom, you could be a teacher, you could be a chemist, you could be a CPA, you could be whatever. And there's always something that you can pull from your experience to move forward. And you've really demonstrated that. I, I think that's, uh, it's just really reaching and taking, taking the bull by the horns. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And certainly if you're a former CPA, you're going to have a leg up on all the rest <laughs> of us. So I encourage all the CPAs <laughs> wanting to change businesses to do it. it. Yeah. So it was a little bit scary, but I think, you, I don't want to say like our industry is saturated. I don't necessarily think that, but I do think it is good to, yeah, lead with your individuality and mm-hmm. what makes you you. Because at the end of the day, you know, like my business coach tells me, that's what people are hiring. Because you know, yes, it's kind of like it's kind of like dating a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I haven't dated in a million years, but it's a little. I assume God, it's like right? dating, yeah. <laughs> and that you're kind of matchmaking people with the assumption that like you're, you know, everything else at equal apple to apples does deciding between two designers or whatever, Mm -hmm. they're really picking you and what you have to bring to the table. Yes. Because at the end of the day, we can all make beautiful spaces, but it's the experience that we provide and the personality that we bring. It's like, be yourself because everybody else is taken. (laughs) I'm going to keep that one. <laughs> yeah, yes. I love that. But, but it's just so, it's so, and it's so much easier. I, when I first got into the industry, I thought I needed to be all quote unquote, you know, air quotes, designery. 
And that's just not me. I mean, for anybody who's listened to this podcast, you know, I love Jesus and I swear a little bit and I'm not conventional. So I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't, and it just wasn't comfortable. And I think that the clients or the prospective clients could feel that. And therefore I wasn't signing. It goes back to dating. It's like, you're desperate. Like that energy, you can feel it. 100%. And I think you're a little woo-woo too. And I'm on that woo-woo train. Mm -hmm. It's it's so all about that subconscious energy and that like imperceptible vibe. It's, it's undeniable. I have found. Yeah. It's a, it's a vibration that you just send Mm -hmm. out and it comes back to you tenfold. So send out the right, send out the right vibe. Exactly. Good vibes. Good vibes. vibes, Yeah. Let me interrupt myself to take a quick moment to thank Satinoff Insurance Agency for sponsoring this episode of the Designed for the Creative Mind podcast. Their support and understanding of the interior design, decorating, and home staging industries is unrivaled. Satinoff understands what our businesses do, and they provide insurance that lets me sleep at night. Yep, this is the firm that I use, and they will do the same for your sleep habits and your business too. They're more than an insurance agency. They're an extension of my business. They take care of the worry because they are the experts, which allows me and my team breathing room to do what we do best, design beautiful spaces. You can find their contact information below in the show notes. Give them a call today. So what do you cover on your podcast? It's called Green by Design. It is. Um, So I am trying to just educate other home pros about everything soup to nuts about green design. So the human health aspect, which is inextricably linked. I can't believe I pronounced that correctly (laughs) Um, to the, to, you know, earth health is very similar, but um, it doesn't, you, you, you can easily get a product that's sustainable, but not say non-toxic. So I go over those distinctions. Um, I interview people in the industry, vendors, certificate, um, oh, very interesting. Like not auditors, like cert- like people who work on certifying clean and green products, other green designers and their experiences and their knowledge. So really, like a little bit from every part of the industry, the supply side, even a little bit of the demands, like just really everything I could get my hands into to explain a what's green, what's non toxic, how do we get it, where do we find it, what do I need to know about it that kind of thing. So it's really for the beginner. I love that. So if I was, if I was curious and wanted to start taking my business in that direction, or just knowing, being more educated about it, Mm, I could easily just hop onto your, on your, onto your podcast and listen and learn. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the goal. That's very cool. Very, very cool. So anybody here who's thinking, thinking green, (laughs) head on over to green by design and listen into Erica and her, her genius. Thank you. Yeah. Green genius. Come on over. Fun, fun. So what kind of projects do you work on? Like what does a green, what, like what the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. So I personally love working across sectors. I love my commercial. I love short-term rental and I don't want to give up residential either. So I work across all of that and, you know, it takes a different shape or a different form with those different kinds of projects, which are vastly different. Um, However, the sourcing is where the planning and the sourcing is really where like the green aspect comes into mind and everything else is pretty stock standard. So I called my business eco method because I, the methodology I use is just looking for ways to weave in alternative, healthier, better products into the sourcing aspect. So I am thinking about what is available in the marketplace. I'm thinking about the client's particular needs, budget, goals, timeline, uh, aesthetic, of course. Mm -hmm. And I kind of weave that all together into, I'm trying to use like an interior design related (laughs) metaphor. So I'm going with the (laughs) tapestry, weaving it into a tapestry Um, where I'm trying to balance all those criteria. So just like every other designer, there's criteria, right? There's like the budget, the aesthetic, the, you know, lead time, all that kind of stuff. But I just have that one extra layer. And so it's not like you're putting recyclable couches in somebody's house. Like, can you, is it, 
What? It's everything. It's everything. So depending on the client's goals, say they're just mm-hmm. interested in having a lighter footprint on this earth. And mm-hmm. on the other end of the spectrum, let's say they're really heavily concerned about chemicals and their sensitivities and exposure. Mm-hmm. So depending on their goals, I will look for products that could meet either or both of those goals. So let's take a table. It's my stock standard example. Um, if they're concerned about like they're a a dining table. If they're concerned about sustainability and their impact, I would be looking for wood, um, not necessarily reclaimed, which is like it had a previous life as a barn or Mm -hmm. something, but salvaged, which is new lumber, but it had to be cut down from a tree that was in someone's way or dangerous or something and would otherwise be sent to the landfill, sadly. Um, so we're going to save that tree, use that wood. It's brand new. It's beautiful. It's modern. And it's, has a much lighter footprint than importing something made out of, you know, veneer overseas. And yeah. overseas, all that kind of sustainability concerns. Now take that same table and on the human health side of things, those clients are wanting to know what is it stained with and mm-hmm. finished with. And, you know, even made out of like, is it solid wood versus MDF? Um, which has formaldehyde in it. So um, we're just looking out for scary chemicals because there's no one else in the industry or governments here or from overseas where some things are made looking out. So that's what we're doing. What an amazing solution that you provide and bringing your knowledge and experience. That's something that I think that is oftentimes in the back of people's heads, but they don't necessarily make the effort to make it a priority. It's really hard. I will say like, you know, just like with other designers in the amount of time and detail it takes to like find out all the information and find the right. quality and do the research, do the sourcing. It's, it's a, the like wild woolly West out there in terms of eco and non-toxic information. So we're mm-hmm. really providing a huge, like just expertise and time saving service. Wow. That is, that's, I don't get speechless very often. Oh, but that's wow. really Look cool. At me go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those areas that it is such a concern and even more and more and more just from, from our poor little globe mm-hmm. and how it's getting so beat up that you're just one household at a time making a difference. Yeah. And then if I can spread the word to other designers and then they Mm -hmm. can, you know, make that difference to their clients, more demand for the vendors, which will help all of us. And even, you know, it spreads to the people making things like protecting them a little bit more. So overall, it can only be up from here, bringing everyone on board. So your clients, you were talking about commercial and residential, as well as short-term rentals. How are they basically finding you? Is it is it through word of mouth or through your website or what do you find works most? I I it's a mix. Um, mm-hmm. I can say luckily because um, I am I guess newer to the design game. I went full time in 2018, but spent that whole year totally like flapping around like a dead confused <laughs> fish. So I don't even know if I count that year. Uh-huh. Um, but I would say, you know, I have, this year is the first year I had mostly return clients and referrals mm-hmm. last year and this well, year, which is so volumes. great. Yeah. So great. Yeah. That's so ideal. And all my, you know, new leads do come in typically via website um, where they're a little bit primed and looking for someone like me. I love that. So how would you suggest if one of our listeners wanted to go green with their design or their home, like their design business or even their own home, what would, what would the first step be other than listening to your podcast? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Check the box. Um, (laughs) I think you, it, what would be good because a lot of people come to me really overwhelmed. Um, Mm -hmm. once they kind of go down this rabbit hole and then they, their eyes are open to how expansive it is on, you know, both sides of that coin, the earth, the human health thing, and it can feel totally overwhelming. So I would say like, just, um, take some time to like, think about what is important to you. Um, you know, what do you really want to achieve in your project and how, you know, how are you going to be balancing that and prioritizing that with aesthetics and budget? Like having those things ready to go, is going to make everything go so much smoother because you're going to have answers to those critical questions. 
And then, then you can take it from there. Uh, once you kind of know what your concerns are, you can start looking up pretty easily, you know, like the, the solutions that are going to get you the biggest bang for your buck, so to speak. Gotcha. So once you narrow down your priorities, put them in, put them in order, then you can start doing the exploration and finding the solutions. Yes. And I so would, it's just like anything else. It's just totally really getting it organized and making sure that your priority is in line with your outcome, yeah, desired outcome. And I think with that overwhelm, like just keeping in mind that you're going to do your best and mm-hmm. it's not going to be perfect. Um, I am a Amen strong, to that. <laughs> yeah. I'm a strong believer that like, because the nature of of us and of this business even is just kind of like, we are going to make an impact, right? So just keep in mind balance and that we're going to do our very best, but nothing's going to be perfect. I have never done a completely green or completely non-toxic project to date. It's always a blend. And so just thinking about where your priorities are, even like rooms or types of, uh, you know, case goods versus upholstery goods, things like that. And, you know, I'm certainly here to guide people along where I think those important priorities should be. Mm -hmm. Um, But just keeping in mind, once people fall down that rabbit hole, it can be scary. So, you know, just knowing we're going to do our best and relax from there because people can get (laughs) a little like, you know, like twisted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, and that's, I, that's one of the things that I, I love to teach. It's like sometimes done is better than perfect oh, and, yeah. and perfection is perception. Like what you think is perfect. I might think is flawed. What you think is flawed. I might think is perfect. So it's all just going to be a matter of where, where you're measuring. 100%. Love it. Love it. Y'all this podcast episode was made possible in part by foyer a lightning fast interior design software that creates photo realistic renderings. I'm not kidding. You can barely tell that it's not a real room. So why leave your beautiful designs up to the imagination of your client when you can show them what their space is going to look like? You will sign more clients and get more approvals with this software. It's powered by artificial intelligence and I'll vouch for its ease because if I can do it, anybody can because y'all know that my design team are the ones who do all the work. Find them in the show notes. So we were talking earlier before we started, before we hit record about collaboration over competition. And my little catchphrase is community over competition and collaboration is just an extension of that. What have you seen in the industry? How are you feeling about that in general? Yes, I have seen an increase in that mindset. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. I just like you when I, you know, first first started like six, seven years ago. I was just like, uh, yes, yeah, stonewalled. I didn't even know where to look. Really, quite a few years ago, I did my own little designer meetup, um, and that was fun. And you could just see we were all starving for like, do you do it like this? And like, how mm-hmm. do you blah blah blah? And then what do you do after the such and such? And it was just like. Okay, absolutely no one has any idea what they're doing. And because of the nature of the industry, you you know, like there are a lot of different models, business models here, and there are a lot of different, you know, processes and procedures. So Mm -hmm. getting mine really clear and in order and organized um, was really, really helpful. And then back to the community thing, I bought the software Ivy, which was then bought by house. And what Ivy did was they did a really good job creating community and the Facebook group is just on fire. I've heard that. Yeah. Yes. So I have been so appreciative of brands like that. And Mm -hmm. then there's other just individuals who have started Facebook groups. I love that you kind of shit on Facebook a little bit, but promote the groups. That's totally (laughs) how I feel. Um, People are like, why are you on it? I'm like, I just have to get into my design groups. Um, (laughs) And so just having that has been invaluable. You know, those are tricky to navigate too. You have to be like really clear and kind of even set boundaries because some people, you know, it's the internet. Some people behave strangely. Yeah. Um, and want to give you comments that you weren't looking for kind of thing, (laughs) but it's been hugely more positive than negative for me. And then just, I really have taken initiative on that. Like I said, I was in a bit of a scarcity mindset before, and I really had to 
like look that demon in the face and be like, Hey, I am going to push you out of here. So I, I was really intentional about looking for other green designers and I straight up emailed them. And I said, be my friend in the subject line. And I said, this is who I am. You're doing something similar. Let's talk about it. Cause it's, you know, creating oh, a business cool. in a vacuum is so terrifying. Well, and nobody understands what we deal with except for other designers. Like I have the yeah. most supportive husband in the world. Like, mm-hmm. amen. He doesn't understand this. Like, mm-hmm. why are you so stressed out about this, Michelle? Well, it's because we're going to ruin the whole design with this one pillow that's not right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's an exaggeration, sure. but only other designers understand it. Yeah. And I have got two, you know, great green design buddies out of that, that I'm in communication and collaboration even with regularly. Mm-hmm. So it's been invaluable to go for it like that. Yeah. Because you can pick up the phone and say, Hey, do you have a solution for like, I have, I have a couple of friends here in the Dallas area that I can easily pick up the phone and say, Hey, who would you call in this situation? Or I need even a cabinet maker or something because mine just fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. And then I had our automatically had people in the lineup to interview for my podcast. It was like, great. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And you can always learn. Yeah. Just learning from each other. And, um, I am so glad I sort of, and then once I started practicing that, it became easier, you know, and just doing a lot of that internal work. And there certainly is enough work for us all. There's enough internal work for us all just in my little head. (laughs) No, but I love the fact that you, you acknowledge that that voice of scarcity, it's not truth. And you kick that demon out Mm -hmm. because There is, it's just like, it goes back to dating. Like there's somebody for everybody. Like my husband is not perfect, but he's perfect for me. And I'm far from perfect, but I'm perfect for him. And it's just a matter. It's the same thing with designers. You know, we've won some clients and we've lost some clients that are interviewing multiple individuals, multiple designers. And I'm fine with that. I think the ones that you don't get, you dodged a bullet. Totally. Going back to dating. It's like, you know what? That it was a Yahoo. Thank God. He didn't ask me to marry him. Right. Yeah. Totally. Thanks God for protecting me there. (laughs) Totally. (laughs) Same thing with clients. Awesome. Well, um, so I love hearing about this and I'm going to go and socially stalk you in just a little bit. And at the end, I'm going to make sure that you share with our audience how they can reach you. But in the meantime, I want to introduce you to our next segment, which is rapid fire Q and a, it's just super fun, light and easy. So the audience can kind of get to know you a little bit and have a little bit of fun. So nothing's off the table. Are you ready? I'm ready. Dun, dun, dun. What's your dream travel destination? (sighs) Oh, I said I was ready. Didn't I? Um, (laughs) I'll give you, I'll give you a genre. My dream travel destination. I'm constantly looking for warm tropical places that have small, um, easy longboard, uh, waves I can surf. Oh, very fun. Yeah. That's my life's goal is to chase the warm weather and the warm, um, a small wave. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not adrenaline filled. It's just very chill. It is for me. That's about as much as I can take. (laughs) You know, your limitations. That's awesome. All right. Coffee or tea? Uh, Coffee. Coffee. And do you have a consistent morning routine? I should. What I, my, I, I try to do some affirmations, do some stretches And I always do drink a lot of water in the morning and then I'll treat myself to either a little bit of coffee or some tea. Amen to that. I've got my hundred ounce bottle here. Oh yeah. There you go. It's timed. So it's keeps me very well hydrated and sometimes a little bit out of pocket. (laughs) So, um, what was the last time you laughed until you almost peed yourself, regardless of how much water you had? (laughs) It was a few weeks ago. My husband and I were watching the show younger and Mm -hmm. sadly, I'm not going to say which actress or anything, but we were, I was making a little bit of fun of the way she was speaking. And I just did this crazy face. You know, when you stick your upper lip lip onto your teeth and it sticks there. Okay. So I was doing that and kind of making fun a little bit and he tried to do it and he couldn't do it. And the face he was making was so (laughs) funny. I was crying tears. So (laughs) there you go. That's a good one. Um, so 
what did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be a choreographer, a dance choreographer. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. You kind of went in a different direction. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Although I'll say like, Do you still have rhythm? I certainly can cut a mean rug still. And I will say that I have taken my rickety body back into dance classes recently. And it's been oh, so fun. fun getting back into that joy that I, that childhood joy. I cannot recommend like finding what you loved as a kid and getting back into it. And I, yeah, I still, I, love that. I still feel a little sad. I'm not a choreographer, but I'm pretty happy. <laughs> you can be a choreographer. You just choreograph, chore, choreograph your own, your own That's moves. Right. That's and right. Teach Me your and husband my friend. how to make the right faces. Um, when was the last time you took a nap? You got me with that one. Yeah. Um, not a napper, huh? I, I aspire to become a napper again. A napper, um, a rapper, and a choreographer. There we go. <laughs> I have no idea where that I pulled I that out probably ass, took a nap. Okay. I did go on vacation recently. So I think I took a nap then. I went, I was lucky enough. Um, actually, I took my business points. I'm very proud of this, my business credit card mm. points. And I took my uh, my friends to Hawaii for a week and then my husband to Hawaii for a week at a different oh, island. And I did sneak in a nap there at one point. Ah, gotcha. 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 Well, I'm a huge advocate of naps. I took one yesterday and I'd love to take one today. Amen. <laughs> we'll That's great. Yes. Well, I also have a three-year-old who's not sleeping through the night right now because she's going uh-huh. into her big girl bed. So, okay. It's, I'm even more of an advocate. So if you could have dinner with anybody, who would you invite? Okay. The listeners can't see this, but you can see behind uh-huh. me, there's little frames on the wall back there. And inside of that are little quotes, um, from Huge. women who inspire me. And I will tell you who's on the wall. Cause this is, I'm at my dining table and they're my, mm-hmm. di- they're my dinner party guests. So I, oh my I, gosh, you're, you're set for this question. I'm set for this question. So we've got, um, Rachel Carson, who was kind of the inventor of the environmental movement. She wrote a really pivotal book. Um, it was about the ag industry and the pesticides and stuff like that. Oh. I've got, of course, Oprah, I've got Dolly Parton, I've got RBG, I've got Ida B. Wells, and I've got Michelle Obama, and let's see, Jane Fonda. And I think Amazing. that's it. Those are my guests. That is so fun. So yes, if you guys could see what I'm seeing right now, I see the lovely face of Erica <laughs> and behind her is like her little bar set up with yeah. glasses on some, is that what kind of wood is that? That is our salvage wood we were talking about. It's very cool. And underneath that, she's got these cute little frames hanging. They're probably what, like eight by four? Even smaller. I think they're like even smaller. Yeah. Gotcha. Five by six or something. Yeah. They're super cute. And so it's as part of your decor, but it has a great story to go with it. How yeah. Fun. I thought so. Fun. Okay. <laughs> so if you could pick only one of those babes, oh my God. who would you it have? It has to be Oprah. Yeah. She's pretty damn cool. She's pretty inspirational and she'd have a lot more a to lot talk about. Things. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a very well-rounded conversation. How fun. Well, Erica, thank you. I don't think we can top that last question. So I'm just going to wrap it up with that because you shut it down with the dinner party. Oh, good, <laughs> I good. love it. Love it. Love it. Well, so, thank you so much. Yes. I know. I know our audience has loved everything that you've shared. Will you as promised, let them know how and where they can connect with you? Sure. I'll just give you the one name. It's Eco Method Interiors. So that's the website and my Instagram handle and come say hi at either of those places. Fun, fun, fun. Well, I will make sure that those details are listed in the show notes so that our audience can reference them. And then for those of you who can benefit from resources surrounding the business of running your interior design business, join the growing community on my Facebook private group. And yes, Facebook, I know, womp, womp, womp. but you can just set up a profile and come in like a ninja to the interior designers business launch pad, and then you can pop out. And uh, don't forget also, if you're, wherever you're listening to this podcast, if you would drop in a review, I would really appreciate it. It definitely helps us spread the word. So thanks again, Erica. Thank you so much. This was so much fun and I love what you're doing. Thank you. Hey y'all. If you love the show and find it useful, I would really appreciate it. If you would share with your friends and followers. 
And if you like what you're hearing, want to put a face with a name and get even more business advice, then join me in my Facebook group, the Interior Designers Business Launchpad. Yeah, I know it's Facebook, but just come on in for the training and then leave without scrolling your feet. It's fun. I promise you'll enjoy it. And finally, I hear it's good for business to get ratings on your podcasts. So please drop yours on whatever platform you use to listen to this. We're all about community over competition. So let's work on elevating our industry one designer at a time. See you next time.